Today we begin our second study of the book of Philippians. Last time we met, we talked about some of the background, some things that you could anticipate in this uh, short but really powerful uh, book. So we're going to jump right into chapter 1. If you have your Bibles, let's go over to chapter 1 and let's see what uh, Paul had to say. Paul begins this book with what we call good Greek letter form. Uh, usually the uh, letters written in antiquity, they would start out with the person who was writing it. And, it, and it could, this would be the same as here. Paul then identifies himself, adds uh, Timothy to it. Then the second thing that you do in a good Greek letter form is to whom it's addressed. And so you find the same thing in book of Philippians, and then grace and peace, and then usually a special expression of thanksgiving. That's what Paul does. He says, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the holy people, uh, sometimes it's translated as uh, saints, um, in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and the deacons. The word overseer is uh, synonymous with what you would find in the Bible, uh, uh, pastors or elders, uh, would be a synonymous, and then you find this word uh, deacons. Actually, the word deacon is a transliteration of diakonos. Diakonos is your Greek word for servant. Uh, in the early church, they had uh, some designated servants. You find some of their qualifications in uh, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 3. I don't know if it was actually an office as such as we've made it with deacons, but nevertheless, they were servants uh, of that particular church. Then he talks about that uh, grace and peace. This is a normal uh, greeting that you would find uh, even in the marketplace, uh, chorus, grace, and the peace, shalom. Uh, the normal greeting in a Hebrew situation would be shalom l'ka, which basically means uh, peace uh, to you. Then he expresses the thanksgiving he has for this particular church. So this is the form that he used here, and he will use it in all his letters, except there is one glaring exception, that is in the book of Galatians, and maybe we can get to that uh, some other time. But notice then what he's thankful for. First of all, he says, I thank my God every time I remember you. And I talked to you about the close relationship that he had uh, with his church. And in all my prayers for all of you, he said, I always pray with joy. Why? Because of your partnership in the gospel. Uh, this church continued to support him. You'll find that later on in uh, chapter four. So they were very close uh, in their relationship together. And he says then, uh, he's right up to now, and being confident of this, that he who began good work in you will carry it to uh, completion unto the day of Christ Jesus. So he's very uh, uh, very grateful for them. He, he prays for them. He holds them in his heart. And so that's very, very important uh, for Paul. Then he says, and look in verse uh, 7 as he continues his thoughts and ideas. He says, it is right for me to feel this way about all of you because I have you in my heart. You see the closeness? I have you in my heart. And whether I'm in chains or defending or confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. And keep in mind, uh, Paul is in prison at this time. And he says, I'm just grateful for your continued uh, support. And God then, verse 8, can testify how, long, how I long for all of you with the affliction of uh, of, with the affection, I should say, of Christ Jesus. So keep in mind he's in prison, uh, but he longs uh, for them to, uh, uh, to, to be together and, 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 to, and to see one another. And I think in our present situation, we can really identify with this. We can really identify the idea that we long to, to be together. And the assembly of the saints will never, ever be the same for me or for you or for anyone else. Sometimes we take these things for granted, but Paul says, I want to be with you. Then in verse 9, in a very significant way, he breaks in into a prayer. This is very characteristic of Paul. You'll find two of these prayers in the, the book of Ephesians. What's very interesting is when you look at the prayers of Paul to find out what he really prayed for. He said, this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. I want this to take place in your life. Because he knew that if, if love did abound in them, it had a lot to do with how they conducted their lives. And that's why it goes on to verse 10. He said that so that you may be able to discern what is best 
and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. If you have a proper love, you then are equipped to handle the challenges that would be facing them. But then he goes on to say, I want you to then be filled with the fruit of righteousness. Where does it come from, Paul? That comes through Jesus Christ. And for what's the reason, Paul? To the glory and the praise of God. You will find this emphasis that Paul had on the praise of God throughout his letters. There's a little statement over in the book of Galatians that has always uh, caught my attention. It's a short statement, but yet it, it, I think it's also a very informative statement. The last verse of Galatians 1, Paul said, and they praise God because of me. They didn't praise me. He said, they praise God. And you see, we're going to have to ask ourselves as we look at the prayers of Paul, what do we pray for? Do we pray for our love to abound? Do we pray for our lives to be filled with righteousness? You see, we need to pray for what God wants in our lives and not necessarily what we want. Many times, prayer can sort of become a grocery list. Now, God, here's what I want. I need this, 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 and this. And I believe it'd be very challenging for us to look at the prayers of Paul. And then we need to ask ourselves, I need to ask myself, am I praying like Paul prayed? Am, am I interested in things that Paul was interested in? I've always said, you let me listen to a person pray, and I'll tell you what the concerns are of their hearts of what they're really concerned about, of what's really, really important. And so as we look then as these introductory words, we see the closeness that Paul has with these people. And then also we see the prayer and the concern that he has for them. And I would hope that as you look at your prayer life, as I look at my prayer life, that we might then decide, let's begin to pray for what Paul prayed for. That would be the first few verses of the book of Philippians. We'll begin next time with uh, uh, verse 12. And so I would urge you then to begin your reading in chapter 1 and verse 12. And we'll talk about what Paul has to say. Thank you very much. Have a good day.